Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Well, yesterday we did these little sort of drop down blur modules or text over image if you like, great little feature. And of course we got the question and it happens every time I do one of these. Um, can you do it from the bottom upwards? Well, surely you can. Really easy, pretty much exactly the same as yesterday's. We've got to do a few other things, same little line of code. But again, that's a nice little feature to have on your site. So let's get started, it's really easy. I'm gonna enable the Visual Builder. And let's go down, and I'll just delete this row and we'll start from scratch. I've got a section here, the blue tab, inside I've got this row, two columns. Let's get rid of those. Okay, I'm gonna add a row. I'll put two in mine again, obviously you put however many you need for yours. And again, for this today, I'm gonna to use a fantastic blur module, because I like it. But this will work with pretty much any module. Of course, I'm using this because we're gonna put an icon on the top. Well, obviously, title goes in there. I'm not gonna spend time doing all this. It's just a regular text sort of field here, bold, italicized, align, headings, add media if you need to. I'm gonna leave all of that exactly as it is. Image and icon down below. I'm gonna use an icon again. And for anybody that didn't see yesterday's, Divi teamed up with Font Awesome, so there's an awful lot of icons. You can do a search if you want to, if you've got a particular icon in mind. We'll just get rid of that. But if you need to browse through, and there's a lot of browsing, they've got a little button right here. You can pop it out, and it'll give you a breakout box like this. And you can pop it out. I'm going to keep mine simple. I'm going to use the up arrow, seeing as we're going up. Okay. As you can see, let's pop that in there. Moving on down, you can link your module here, usual best practices apply. If you're linking to your own site, keep it in the same window. If not, open it in a new tab. I'm not gonna link mine today. I am gonna give mine a background. And again, we'll keep it simple. If you wanted to, you could give it a gradient or even an image, or you can combine those three. You've got video background, background pattern, background mask, I'm going to keep mine simple. Black background, there it is. Okay, I'm not going to give it an admin label. That's really useful when you're working in wireframe mode. We'll hit the little purple button for anybody who doesn't know. Little icon on the left hand side. If you position things with fixed positioning, sometimes you can't get to them on the front end. This will take you to the back end or wireframe mode where you can see everything mapped out like this. And I have to admit, for certain, certain situations, I find it quicker building on the back end, especially when I've got blog post templates that I've done before, etc. So let's go back. We'll pull this one back up. And let's go over to our design now. And again, I'm not gonna spend much time doing design. Image and icon, well, I want it a lot smaller. I'm gonna make it white in color. And to keep things simple, let's make it 50 pixels. Great. Alignment's fine. Don't want to do anything like rounded corners. I'm simply going to go down to my text and pop it into the middle and we'll put a bit of spacing in there. So rolling on down, I'm going to the general text, which will do both the header and the content. I'm going to make it light so I can see it. Pop it in the middle. Great. And finally, let's just put a bit of padding around it so it's not so cramped up at the side. I'm going to go down to spacing. I'm going to put say 10 pixels on the top, just put in the 10, it'll put in the pics. 25 everywhere else. Exactly what we did for yesterday's. If you have two sides that are opposite that you wanna do the same thing for, just put the first one in, hit the chain, it'll do the opposite for you. You might think I'd put some more on the bottom, but we're gonna give this thing a fixed height, so it's not gonna make a whole lot of difference here. Well, the way these things work, especially if you've seen yesterday's, is the image that we're gonna see initially is gonna reside in the column that this blurb module is sitting in. And we're only gonna have the top bit of this module showing. In fact, let's make that icon a bit smaller. Let's try 30 pixels. Now we'll have a smaller black strip at the bottom of our image then, that's fine. Great, so we'll save that, and now we'll put the image in that we want to see initially. To do that, we need to go into the row, just click anywhere within the row going to go into the green tab for the row. We're working on the first column right here. Okay. And just like yesterday, I'm going to go into the background of this column. 
And I'm going to add an image. Let's choose a different image this time. Let's go for this one. And I'll pop that one in there. And you might think, well, I can't see anything. Well, that's because our little blurb module is sitting on top of it. But I actually want this image to be something like this shape. It doesn't have to be exactly that shape and show exactly all of it. But I want it to be that sort of landscape sort of shape. So I'm going to give my column a fixed height. To do that, I'm going to go over to my advanced down in my custom CSS. And this is where this little line of code comes in. I'm going to go down to the main element. Remember, we're in the column, not the row. And I'm going to give it a fixed height. I'm going to say height 300 pixels. And as you can see, our little image is bleeding out at the bottom there. If you wanted to check it, make sure that it's going to look right, you could put an opaque background in the little blurb module. You'll be able to see all the way through it. And we can adjust this later if we need to. Now, it's always a good idea. Put a little semicolon in there. It's always a good idea to check these on tablet and mobile if you're going to use them. They will work fine, but you may need to adjust the height. So let's go down to this little tablet view on the left hand side there. If you don't see it, hit your little purple button and it should appear. Yeah, I could have it a little bit deeper on a tablet. So again, you can go in here, and this is common to all Divi modules. If you roll over the little writing, You'll see some little icons appear. There's a little phone type icon. You can click on it. Tablet mode. And you can set a different height. Let's try 350. Height colon 350 px. PX. Yeah, I think that'll work. And we've got to remember to do this when we adjust the height in our actual module in a little while. OK, and on phone. No, too tall. On phone, I think there's actually too much info there, so we could cut it back by about 50, but we can't cut it back any more than that. So the aspect will be a bit off, but the image will still look fine. So let's take that back to 300, perhaps on the phone. All right, go on 300 pics. And you may be thinking, well, why don't we just do this in the sizing? Well, for columns, you've got no sizing in there. Yeah, that's going to work fine. We just need to adjust the size of our blurb a little bit for the phone there. Great. Well, let's go back to desktop. And what I was talking about, most modules, if you go into the design, around the spacing, they have a sizing and you set the fixed height there. That's not available for columns. That's why we had to write that bit of code. OK, well, let's roll this back up. And all we need to do is a bit of adjusting on a little blurb module. So we're happy with our column. And the row is fine. Let's go back into our blurb module. We're going to have to go back into that row in a moment and hide any overflow when we adjust this. OK, we know this is 350. So let's make this 350 tall. So we're going to go to design. And this is what I was talking about in the column just now. There's the sizing. Here's the height. And we can make it. 350 pixels tall and as you can see it's covered that image now for aesthetics I'd like to push my writing down a little bit to more in the middle here and there's no actual spacing unfortunately you can adjust it all by putting padding in there that's going to push the icon down but I want the icon to stay where it is so we can write another little bit of code if you want to push yours down over in the advanced again in the custom CSS I'm going to roll down past before and main element and after there's the blurb image, which would be our icon in this case. In the blurb image, I'm going to put a bit of margin on the bottom to push this down. So let's say margin or padding would do it. Let's even use padding. Padding, dash bottom, colon. Let's give it 50 pixels and see what that looks like. That's not bad. I'm going to leave it just like that. And remember, if you need to, you can adjust it on tablet and mobile here also. So if we go back to our height now in the sizing, you're going to want to check it on tablet and mobile also. I think the only one we're going to need to change is the tablet. So let's go into the tablet version. Roll on down. There it is. Yep. We need that to be about 350 on the tablet, don't we? And for the phone, 
that's fine it's inheriting it from the tablet no it's doing it auto that's actually going to work with the phone all fits in there nicely great well let's do the little hover effect I'm going to go back to my desktop mode to do this it's really easy let's just move this up a little bit closer we're in our design tab still we're going to do it all in spacing just below and I'm going to do it with margin I know this is 300 so let's push it down by perhaps 250 that's not bad we can see a lot of it but of course we've got all this stuff spilling out of the bottom I don't want to see that where the column ends I want to get anything below there to disappear so let's save this go into our little column into the row first column over to advanced we can go down to visibility both horizontal and vertical you want to change to hidden if you want them to be able to scroll up with it you can leave it just like that but I want them both hidden so we don't have a scroller yeah that's gonna work absolutely fine you can see enough of the image got our little black bar there let's save that save that again and actually create the hover effect itself we can just get into our module it's down there like I say if you place things and margin things sometimes it's hard to get to them use wireframe mode if you have a trouble okay back into the design so that's initially what I want to see let's go back into our spacing but when I hover over it or when they hover over this black bar I want it to go back up to the top and reveal everything so we can create a hover effect and again this is common to all Divi modules hover over if there's a little arrow there we can set a desktop state exactly how we want it when they put their mouse on it the hover state simply can take that back to zero and there it is that's what they'll see on hover you know, maybe a little bit too much padding there let's take a little bit of that away in our custom CSS make that say 30 yeah that's fine okay and the time it takes with a hover to go from one to the other by default with Divi is 300 milliseconds while we're in the advanced tab if you want to speed it up or slow it down just get out of our custom CSS here just below we've got something called transitions there's the default 300 mils or just under a third of a second I'm going to take mine up to about half a second maybe a bit slower just for a bit of grace don't want any delay want it to happen as soon as the mouse hits it and the transition speed curve I'm going to use is ease in out that's my go-to hover effect they'll all work pretty much but some are better than others in certain situations so check them out well if we've done everything right now this should work for us I'm going to save the changes exit the visual builder go on down there's our little image nothing will happen when I hover on the image when I hover over the little black bar when you're done reading it take your mouse off and it eases back down again and again that's one of those nice little effects that if people are mousing around your site it's gonna get their attention pretty quickly let's have a little look on tablet and mobile roll on down on the margin on the tablet we need to add another 50 pixels on that because we added 50 pixels to the height I believe let's have a look on an iPhone yeah that works fine on the iPhone of course they have to tap or click rather than do that and again you could adjust the padding under the icon there if you wanted to pull that up a little bit on mobile great well, that works absolutely perfectly let's roll it up so there you go guys I hope that answered that question that's how to do it coming up from the bottom rather than going down from the top I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful if you have please give it a thumbs up ring the bell comment share and subscribe to our YouTube channel don't forget if you have any questions pop them down below I'll do my best to answer them or make a demo video for you once again this has been Jamie from system 22 and webdesignandtechtips.com thanks for watching have a great day